Welcome to Red Army TV. Uh, we were going to do a Steve McLaren interview special, but obviously the goings on in and around the Riverside crisis, no crisis, Pulis in, Pulis out, it's as bad as Brexit. We thought we had to bring you something a little bit more special. Phil Bullock from Red Army Social, Mark Yufano from Red Army TV uh, joining us on the couch. Fellas, we, with what's happening, we just couldn't have a week off really, could we? Uh, where do we start, Phil? You've been pretty vocal on the old uh, facing book. Um, I, I, it's it's hard to pick a point where we start. There's obviously there's fans calling for for Tony Pulis to leave. There's fans calling for Gibbo to act. There's fans saying, give him a chance, let him bring his signings in. Um, I think me and Mark had a, a chat before we came on air, and I think very much what you've said there uh, is that there's two sets of fans at the Riverside, and I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I I, I, I totally agree. I mean, I I think. You won't get me on here tonight saying Pulis out. I, I wouldn't do that. The same as I wouldn't boo a player. However, I was at the game like everybody else on Boxing Day, and it's not pretty. And I'm a I'm a, a guy who says you can't blame a player because he'll only do what he's told to do. And for me, we were absolutely negative <laughs> all the way through. It was awful. It, it, when a team can come 16th in the league, Shot two guys up front with a, a lad in behind, scored a goal and put ten men behind the ball and we can't break them down. We've got problems. Comments flying in. Uh, David McClone, sack Pulis now. Andrew McDonald, come home from Abu Dhabi, couldn't wait to see the Borough. Oh dear, no pace, no vision, no clue. Need die ball. Hi guys, what's your predictions for where we might finish this season? We might get onto that one deal at some point. Um, Paul Nicholas, five goals in our last ten home games. Won a penalty, won an own goal. That's three goals in open play in our last ten home games. That's shocking. Pulis is killing us with ultra-defensive football. There's nothing positive on there. I think it's hard to find positives. Uh, the last few weeks have been so negative. Uh, I've seen all sorts flying around social media. Um, but, but I think, you know, and, and I say this in one of the posts I put up, when, when Tony Pulis first came to this club, he spoke to every fan directly. He talked about the steel industry, how hard working we are. We all lapped that up. We all loved that because he's not a manager that's come in. If you remember Gordon Strachan when mm. he came in, I don't want to be here. I don't need to be here. Callie Monk was the same. You know, didn't didn't um, didn't get on with the fans. You know, came um, in, didn't speak about the area, didn't speak nothing. But Tony came in and gave him his due, won the fans over. However, yeah. he sold himself to me. I was I was hosting the Paddy Cronesbury's Disabled Supporters Association do, and it was shortly after. It was only a couple of months Pulis had been in place, and he was there, and we had a chat in front of all the fans that were there, and he's talking about the steel industry, he's talking about grit, determination, putting a shift in. He understands all that because there are such similarities between where he's from in South Wales to Teesside. I was but I bought into it. I mean, there's no you know there's no hiding the fact, and I sat on this very sofa. On Red Army TV, and all the guys who watch it will know. I was a Tony. I am a Tony Pulis convert. I didn't want him at the club. I thought it was negative. I sat on this sofa and said, "You know what? What he's done is he's coming. He's galvanised the team. He's got them all pulling in the right direction. He's seeing the right things. The steel industry, steel industry. He's from a working class background like us, and things like that." He said he ticked all the right boxes. However, let's look at now. Have we moved on from where we are here? In and his words, not ours. He said, judge me on mm. next season. Well, we can say we haven't got the signings in as much as we want. We couldn't do that. Let's, who are we going to blame? Should we blame the chairman? Should we blame the club? Should we blame the man? I don't care who we blame, but at the end of the day, it hasn't happened, has it? He said, judge me on next season. Well, if I'm judging on what I've seen on Boxing Day, my God, my God, I've got an eight-year-old nephew who never wants to go back again. That's but, how bad it is. But, but we, he, he said that, judge me on next season. And if we are to judge him at this point right now, we are fifth. We're not 17th. We're not 15th. We've not had a disastrous campaign. We are fifth. We have played so bad this last few weeks, yet for whatever reason, we are still fifth. We are in the playoffs. Is that a bad season? If we finish this season now, is it a bad season, playoffs? Well, that's us relying, Do you know what on, I mean? that's us relying on other results, isn't it? You know, at the end of the day... We shouldn't be relying on anything. But I tell you what, we, we need to pl plug the results in. We need to get the performance. I would rather go and watch the butter get beat four three and have a go. Shit, they came on Boxing Day, like I say, popped up front with Adam Ridge in behind. They scored the goal and sat back, and said, "Come on, come and come and break us down." And and they've got the three points out of it. Why aren't we at home 
playing with two up front with someone in behind and thinking, you know what, I'm going to give these fans what they paid for. We're going to go and have a go. Well, that, that's we it. don't. That's, but, that's, that, but that argument, Phil, about we're fifth or sixth, to me it doesn't hold water because we've been top three times. We've, we've been, I, I still say we've been overachieving. So heaven knows where we're going to finish up at the end of the season in, in, in my mind. But we've been top three times. We've had opportunities. We've had six opportunities to jump above Leeds or somebody like that. It was Sheffield United as well to go top. But we have been top. Then we've been second when things haven't gone right for us. But what we've done is we've blown opportunities. We've been really Rather than nil-nil at home. Sheffield Wednesday, the latest on Boxing Day, we get beat one-nil. We get turned over absolutely massively by Villa. See, that, that's exactly my point. I've had arguments with people three months ago. We, we just come off the back of the first eight games of the season and we were we were riding high them waves for us then all of a sudden after that first international break and I was on the show and I, and I said it I just hope we continue this form going into the second part of the season we didn't and that's when we started to crumble but so many fans then jumped down everybody else's throat we've only drawn we've not lost three points it's still a point it's still a point you know and I kept saying but what, at what point is that going to come back and bite us in the backside and it's now doing that. If we'd have won a game against the likes of Rotherham, Swansea at home, Aston Villa, we wouldn't be where we are now or we wouldn't be as, as unhappy with what's going on at the club as we are now if we'd have picked the points up that we know as fans that we are more than capable of picking up. I mean, my outlook on it is, and, and again, like I say, you're not going to get me on here saying Pulis out because at the end of the day... Why not? Well, well the, the, the big thing for me is I think we've got the squad of players at that club to, so do, do to do well in the championship. So why why aren't we doing uh, better than we are? Uh, the book has to stop somewhere, and if that's you know, it, come on, we all go to work. It's either a supervisor and a manager. Uh, you know, it's got to stop somewhere. The book's got to stop somewhere. I just think for me, it hasn't changed. It, it, and I, I'd lo I'd love to see him kick on. And and I, but I, when I read other social media blogs, I read other clubs he's been at, and and, and we've all read it. You know, the, we were on here when he was just just got announced, and and there, there was fans from West Brom and that coming in saying he's going to ruin your club, and we all laughed it off, and mm. we all said, well, no, you know, let's judge him on what he does. However, you know, they've said he's animated on the sidelines. They said he deflects things away from play, uh, away from himself onto players in the area, and that's why. And to be fair to him, he did. He came in, he said, I love this area. You know, the t steel industry, a bit like Wales and all mm. that. And other managers never. Phil's just mentioned Stratton came in, said I don't even want to be here, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't need the job, he said. They were his exact words. Monk didn't even speak about the fans, he just came in, he was like the quiet man. He came in and got the fans on side. However, when I was at the game on Boxing Day, not all them fans were on side. I hate to no. see players Bowen, weren't on his side. I hate to see Bowen at any club. I just think think that the players want to play football and they don't necessarily want to want, want to play like the negative type. We had three midfielders on Boxing Day. All playing the centre midfielder role, Clayton, Howson, Bezic, and Downing. And I know the formation was Downing was supposed to be in behind Brit. However, it isn't because he'll naturally sit in. Now, if I'm one of them centre halves or a defender <coughs> asking for the ball off my goalkeeper because we like to try and play out, there was no movement in front. And then what we do is we revert to that long ball and with one guy up front. We revert to 4 4 2, and we spoke about this earlier, Phil. We revert to 4 4 2 in the second half. Yugel came on, he was just picking the scraps up. Instantly we had more of the ball because you're picking the scraps up. I just think that he's a bit McLaren-esque, if you like, where it was sort of like, if we if they don't score past us, they'll make a mistake and we'll score and win 1-0. It doesn't always happen and it's, it's not attractive footballer. But it's it's the football that Karanka played. It was that, let's, let's look really bad for 89 minutes and in the 90th minute, let's snatch a goal. That's what we're trying to do now under Tony Pulis. We, we know the football is not going to be great. History tells us that. But he went to a club like Stoke. He galvanised the squad. He built his own squad with his own players. He got them into the Premier League and he established them as a Premier League team. What happened after that was nothing to do with Tony Pulis. He'd already been sacked. But he got the team up there. He solidified them and established them as a Premier League team. You cannot do that with players that you've not had the chance to bring in. And this is what I keep saying. Judge him on this season, but you can't judge him if he hasn't had the chance to bring in his players. Yes, he's written a list, he's checked it twice, he's given it to, to Adrian Bevington, but he's not brought the players in it was a bit that like he a wanted. Song, that. He was, he's <laughs> not brought the players in that he wanted to bring in, and he's had to settle for second best. I have no doubt that 
Jordan Hugill was not his number one priority as a striker, but he became available from a, from a Premier League club. That's why he's come to the Borough and the fact that he's from Borough. We went for Martin Waghorn. We've been in the past for, for Snodgrass under different managers, whatever. If they don't want to come here, that's fine. But we can't then blame the manager for not being able to bring in people that he thinks are more than capable of putting this team into the next gear. OK, fellas, thanks for that. We'll uh, be back in but a gif. We've got to take a quick break for Teesside TV. Chewing the cut over more things, Borough, and where we are currently. Is it a crisis or isn't it? We'll be back after this short break. Welcome back to Red Army TV. It is a social special. It's uh, Mark and Phil on the couch. Uh, fellas, let's get back into it then. If there's another manager now sat there without a job thinking... If Tony Pulis gets a sack, I'll, take the I'll, job. I'll go in there and take that with them players now. Absolutely, I'll take the spend no money in January. I'll go in there now and I'll galvanise that team. And all it takes is just play two up front. Just like I say, and you're not going to win every football match. You know, we're not living in it's not pie in the sky. You're not going to win every football match, but at least look as like you're going to have a goal. We were at home on Boxing Day with thirty thousand people watching, sat in that stadium. It was rocking before kickoff. We started well for the first ten minutes. Yeah, started really well. Minutes. The injury wasn't it? it was the injury yeah. the player and the sub, and suddenly we backed yeah. off. We just stepped off, foot off the from gas. From side to side, from side to side. But for me, there was only there was one or two players going side to side, side to side, and that was Clayton, and it was Ayala. Every time, the, like, I don't understand why Clayton has to come so deep and pick the ball up three yards away well, he picked, from, from where Ayala is. He picks it up off the goalkeeper, doesn't he? But why? We, we've got Flint and Ayala, arguably two of the best defenders in the league. Why is it? Why does Tony Pulis think that Clayton needs to drop so far back to assist them? Because I have no doubt that if they're under any pressure, they're just going to hoof the ball. The only pitch. dramas with that, and, and what we're doing is we're getting into tactics and we're talking about football and things like that. And those but we've are, been talking tactics all, all night because we've been talking two up front, one up front. You, you know, if, if Clayton is going to come and pick the ball up, that's fine. That's fine, and the, the defenders are going to uh, go wide. But then the guys in front of him, Aren't your Bezics, your Down, and they've got to move. What, what, what happened on, on, against, on Boxing Day is they were just all that clumped in the middle like centre midfielders. And the, uh, uh, do you know what? I felt sorry for Britta Sombolong. He was just up front. He, he, he might as well have stayed in bed. He, he, he just. He... I feel sorry for Brit. Yeah. I actually think Brit's a good striker, and I think he proved himself at Forest that he's a good striker. But he's got no service. I think when you will come on, it's easy to knock you will. You know, because us as Butter fans, and I'm probably like, guilty of it myself. You know, when you see a, a Butter lad doing well, it's great. And then when he makes a mistake, we're quick to jump on his back because he's a Butter lad. But to be honest, he absolutely runs his heart out, Yugo. And Asamba I I Longa was, was trying his... And I thought, them two up front, and let's look back at the early part of the season when Braithwaite was in the team. Someone we've never even spoke about yet, by the way. That's a totally different subject. Braithwaite is a player, by the way. Him and Britt were really good when they the start of the season. Mm. Him and Britt had a little thing going. He, he scored four or five goals, Braithwaite. Or something. Where, where's that gone? Where, where's that gone? It's just gone to being like, stick one up top. Even at, at home against a, a team what came 16th in the league. I just think that's... Not unforgivable, but it's it just shows like a really negative streak that do we need to do that? Because straight away you can you know it's Boxing Day, kids and, and parents have got you know got tickets for Christmas. They know it's going to be uh, one of the biggest crowds. Well, let's go out and do something. Let's go out and try and entertain. Uh, and I just think for the sake of put and he and he done it in the second half, didn't he? We, we did start picking up scraps in the second half, didn't we? We should be doing better than picking up the scraps, though, surely. Let's get into some of the comments, because there's plenty of them coming in. Stu Wallace, we know he's a big Tony Pulis fan, don't we? Um, Clueless Pulis, Tony knows now. Do I need to say any more? 4-4-2. By the way, Norwich and Leeds have scored more than us in added time than we've had in normal time over the past handful of weeks. Uh, Colin Ward, whatever plans Pulis is sending the players out with, ain't working. Chris Loft Lofthouse, we've uh, had unattractive football for a while. The difference now being we aren't grinding results out. Uh, Stu again, his signings, if he gets any, uh, we'll have to play the Pulis way, so nothing's going to change. Uh, Colin, working class background, doesn't win games, Mark. There's no That's guarantee right. there. He's Alex, right there. Yeah, right. he is. Anton, Billingham Town are playing better football than the Borough at the moment. Got to agree there as well. Yep, Alex Scott, current league position is more down to good fortune than anything else. Uh, Paul Nicholas, our midfield's overrated, doesn't score enough goals, hardly creates anything. There's loads and we'll get through them as well. Uh, interesting though, 
the last win, Reading, we had to rely on a fullback to score goals. You know, how many games are we going to be able to say to our our, our forward line, fellas, you've got to go out and win it for us? And how many are they going to how many are they going to be able to win? Because we're not getting goals, are we? Other than you said Braithwaite at the start of the season, absolutely. I was at Millwall, two 0 down, two two. We rescued it in the last what five minutes of the game, but. When have, when have our strikers looked like destroying a team? I, I, don't, I don't think we have looked like destroying any team this season and I think that's, that's purely down to the fact that we're playing one up front. Now, on, on the Monday night social, I've, I've said this before, we play in such a system where we, we've, we've got shot and typically, I know it's McNair now, uh, and Friend at left-back who are playing as these wing-backs. As soon as Britt or Hugill get the ball in midfield, they're looking to dispatch that to the wings and, and the idea is that our wingers are going to bomb down and put the ball back in where, where, where that strike is eventually going to be. But when you, when you get Brit, yes, he looked hungry on Boxing Day, but even when he had the ball, for me, never once looked like he was capable of scoring a goal. We, we, we've got this thing where we rely so heavily now on George Friend to put a cross into the box, which is exactly what we did last season with Adama Traore. Now, to play somebody like Traore, brilliant, because we know he's got the pace. We know nine times out of ten he's going to beat defenders. George Friend cannot do that. But we insist on dropping the ball off for him to put a cross in that, like you said earlier on, nine times out of ten, he's not going to beat the first man. Yeah, his distribution is not good enough. You know, George is a defender, simple as that. Uh, you can't have your cake and eat it. Tony likes the same to... with Shotman. Shotman's yeah, well, not Tony likes to play with... Big four defenders at the back. He has at every club he's been to, doesn't he? Really, the big four, four centre halves, really. Mm. But you can't have your cake and eat it. What you can't do then is sit and what, what I want you to do as well is get down the, the wings and I want you to pump the ball in like a, like a, a proper winger. Mm. And, and to be fair to Tony, he has come out and I think looking at a bit of obviously social media, I've seen the kiddie from Huddersfield, it is wingers he's looking at. He's looking for quick players and wingers to, to come in. I go back to what you said though, uh, uh, sorry, one of the comments said, it still goes to that Tony Pulis way of being sitting back and being a little bit negative, maybe trying to wait for a mistake. I, I don't know, I, I just think the players are probably caught between a rock and a hard place because players want to play. And like I say, I'll, I'll say it, I'm blue in the face, we have got the players there. Clayton doesn't turn into a bad player overnight. Downing doesn't turn into a bad player overnight. Housen doesn't turn into a bad player overnight. For me, and I go football is all about opinion, Bessic was the worst player on the pitch for me on, on Boxing Day. And he took everyone off around him yeah. than, than him. But, you know, that's football. Are we in trouble, Phil? Because a lot of fans point to the fact that Pulis is on the sideline, waving his arms around, screaming, shouting, throwing water bottles down, because it looks like the players aren't doing what he's asking them to. So it's one of two things, isn't it? Either the players aren't doing what he's asking them to, and he's getting frustrated... Or are the players actually doing what he's asking them to do? It's not working and he's getting frustrated. Either way, we're in bother, aren't we? Yeah, I, look, I, I honestly, honestly think, and, and I'm not going to sit here and say that he needs to be sacked, but I honestly think if we don't get any points on Saturday uh, against is it Ipswich, Ipswich, I think there's a real danger that we're going to be manager this. I really do. Uh, and, and I think that's probably more going to be down to the fact that the fans will have spoken uh, and, and the club will be left. Uh, without a choice. I saw one of the polls uh, on one of the social media sites and I think it was something like 48-52 uh, in favour of him going. Brings it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and for me, I, I honestly expected to see that, the figure for him to go, I expected it to be a lot higher than actually what it was. Um, I, think, <coughs> I, th I do think fans are mixed at the minute. And that, uh, the, the problem is for the chairman is at the end of the day, he's got to make that decision and he looks at it and thinks, at what stage of the season is our season over? Because if, if, he, if he takes it so long and Tony doesn't get the points in and he doesn't, make, doesn't act and bring someone in, generally when, when you bring a new manager in, you get a lift, don't you? You'll, you'll get that lift and hopefully you're going to do that while you're still fourth, fifth, sixth in the table. Mm. Not when you've dropped down to where Sheffield uh, Wednesday are now about 16th. That's a massive lift you need then. So, unfortunately for the chairman, it's, that's the hard decision he's got to make. When do we make that call? You said, are we in crisis? Gary Monk got sacked for very, very similar 
uh, and Tony got the job. And look, and look at where Birmingham are now. Look at where Nottingham Forest two, are two now. Two points behind us, Birmingham. Do, do, and, and Forest are right behind them mm -hmm. or right in front of them. I don't know which way around it is. But when you're saying that, at which point does, does Steve Gibson look at the season and think, yeah, it's over? We are fifth. We are not 15th. We are not 25th. We are fifth. Southgate got sacked and we were second. But because, we're fifth because with Gibbo squad saw the, the direction still, heading in yeah, the wrong direction. It's that, it's that judgment call he's got to make. And what I meant by that, I might have come across wrong there, but what I mean is he's got to make that judgment call as the chairman of the club and think, yes, we're fifth in the league, but is it going the right direction? He aired them fans on Saturday. And ultimately, we've sat on this, these sofas before and said, ultimately, regardless of what club it is, Borough, Huddersfield, Chelsea, it's Man United, it's the fans who get the manager the sack. Simple as that, because mm. they show, they show their passion and they show the boo and they throw season tickets and. No, they don't turn up. And now with a, a don't turn up, and obviously with with the the old advent of social media, there's <coughs> polls everywhere. There's people saying this. We had thirty thousand in at the Riverside on Boxing Day, and we served up a shower of absolute garbage. Heads dropped so quickly, and I know Tony Pulis at the end of the game said when they got their first goal, some of the lads' heads dropped and they couldn't come back up. No, ten minutes. Into the game, there was a feeling where actually the lads on the pitch were not up for a, 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 a rout. Fellas, we're out of time. Thanks for the chat. We could go on for months and months and months. Fingers crossed for the weekend. Will Borough get themselves out of it. And we'll catch you next week right here on Red Army TV. See you then.